All right, welcome back, class. Uh, today we're going to do fluids in motion, lesson one. We've spoken about fluids for a while now, but it's always been static fluids, fluids that are not moving. So now we're going to talk about fluids that are actually moving. Um, the first concept that we're going to cover is called the continuity equation. Continuity equation. What the continuity equation is about is basically that what goes in must come out. Whatever amount of fluid is passing by, imagine a hose or a pipe or even a river, however much goes past one place, the same amount goes past the, some other place in the same amount of time. Otherwise, maybe not so much with a river, but with a pipe or something, it would, it would stack up. Imagine um, a, a highway with cars, okay? Pretty much you've got to have about the same speed all the, way, all the way through, or otherwise you get a, a stack up somewhere. Fluids don't like to stack up. So you're going to have, uh, what we're going to talk about is something called the mass flow rate. Whoops. Okay, so what is the mass flow rate? That's the number of kilograms of fluid passing through any point in one second. So at any point along the pipe, the same number of kilograms per second are going to go by. So the unit here is kilograms per second. That's the unit. So how are we going to calculate kilograms per second? Well, imagine um, this is a pipe or a hose. And you've got some fluid flowing through that with a velocity v. OK, so here's your cross-sectional area of your hose, right? Now, a time t later, whatever was here moves down through the hose to some other spot, right? Some distance. Well, this distance, we'll call it x, is going to be the velocity times the time, right? The velocity is rate times time. So in a certain amount of time, you're going to have uh, this area here of all the fluid that's here is going to move down to there. So in fact, in that amount of time, you will have the volume of fluid that has gone through any point in that amount of time is going to be this volume of this cylinder here. Well, that volume is just equal to AX, right? The cross-sectional area times the distance. Okay, so that's also equal to AVT. Okay, so that V is velocity. That V is volume. Don't get them mixed up. Well, what's mass? Well, Mass, you may remember, is density times volume. So that's going to be the mass is the density times the cross-sectional area times the velocity times the time. Now, I told you that the mass flow rate 
is the rate of mass, how many kilograms per second go through. So, in fact, the mass flow rate is going to be the mass divide mass that passes through any past any point divided by the amount of time that it spends. Right? That's the rate, kilograms per second. So we have rho A V T over T. The T's cancel and we have rho A V T. So that's our mass flow rate. Okay, so here's one of our big concepts, right? Mass flow rate equals rho A V T. Now the mass flow rate at one end of the hose has to be the same as the mass flow rate of the other end of the hose. So we can have our continuity equation, okay, is going to be basically rho 1 A1. Now the V doesn't change. Oh, wait a minute, that T goes away. Oops. Sorry about that. I guess the V could change, yeah. So I'm going to put V1 equals rho 2 A2 V2. There's a continuity equation. All right, so you want to hold on to that one. But the truth is, most of the time, rho doesn't change either, right? Because the density of water, for instance, doesn't change much. It's hard to compress it. It's called incompressible, relatively speaking. So let me make us a new page. And we can say, for incompressible fluids, we don't have to have the row part anymore. We can just basically say that A1 V1 equals A2 V2. That's a really good thing to know. It's really powerful. So this, this expression, AV, area times velocity, that's what's called, that's equal to the volume flow rate. That's the number of meters cubed per second. How much volume per second goes through any one, past any one spot. So for an incompressible fluid, this is, com this is conserved. So the continuity equation basically becomes this one right here. So let me give you an example. You've got a, uh, a garden hose, right? And the water is going through this garden hose at some V, we'll call it V1, right? And the garden hose has got a cross-sectional area we'll call A1. Now, then you take your thumb, okay, and you cover up half of that, okay? There's your hand. You're covering up half of that um, end of the hose. Suddenly, if this, let's say this A1 here is, say, um, oh, I don't know, let me just try to think about numbers and stuff, um, 0 
zero two square meters, okay? And let's just say this V1 is equal to um, two meters per second. If I cover this up so that A2 equals 0 0.01 meters squared, what do you think V2 is going to equal? Well, let's see. A1V1 equals A2V2. So 0 0.02 times 2 equals 0 0.01 times V2. Let's see. 0 0.04 equals 0 0.01 times V2. Divide both sides by 0 0.01. And you get that V2 equals 4 meters per second. I'll bet a lot of you guessed that, right? You cut the area in half you double the velocity. You make the area twice as big, it goes half the speed because you got the same amount of water coming in as going out. It's incompressible. The same volume flow rate, the same number of cubic meters per second is going in this end. That number of cubic meters per second is coming out of this end. Well, if this cubic meters per second is going through this nice big opening, it doesn't have to go as fast. You've got to get the same amount of water out this little or opening. It's got to go twice as fast in order to get the same amount of water out. That's the whole deal. Okay, so typically this is our formula that we use a lot. A1V1 equals A2V2. By the way, that is often called Q. Okay, so this is Q here is the volume flow rate. Okay, so Q is area times velocity. And it's conserved for incompressible fluids. If you happen to have a compressible fluid, then you got to throw this rho in here. Okay, so then you're going to have rho 1 A1 V1 equals rho 2 A2 V2. This, this, this piece here is the mass flow rate. Because this is, if, even if the fluid can be compressed, you're still going to have the same amount of fluid going in as the amount of fluid going on. The same number of kilograms of fluid coming in as kilograms of fluid coming out. This is kilograms per second, okay? Mass flow rate. Whereas the other one, if I can get to that next page, this is meters cubed per second volume flow rate. Now we don't care about mass because volume and mass are pretty much like the same thing if the density doesn't change, right? So if the no amount of mass in equals mass out and the density stays the same, that means volume in equals volume out, which is really nice because um, we don't have to worry about rho anymore. We just basically have area times velocity is conserved. So that's all I got for you today. Uh, we'll do some problems in class. Have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.